Yep. You're on. Oh, trying to reconnect. There we go. Good evening. Woo! Good evening. How are we doing tonight? Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. The Lord's angel stood before them, and the Lord's glory shone around them. They were terrified. Can you imagine? They were terrified. They said, don't worry. Don't be afraid. We have good news for you. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us. You created us. transformed by you that we may walk 
in the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our next carol is the first Noel. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. In fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. They job, a pleasant vacation. Joy, on the other hand, is as notoriously unpredictable as the one who bequeaths it. Sarah was never going to see 90 again, and Abraham had already hit 100. And when the angel told them that the stork was on its way at last, well, the, both of them almost collapsed. Abraham laughed till he fell on his face. And Sarah stood cackling behind the tent door so the angel wouldn't think she was being rude as the tears streamed down her cheeks. When the baby finally came, they even called him laughter, which is what Isaac means in Hebrew, because obviously no other name would do. Sarah and her husband had had plenty of hard knocks in their time and there were plenty more of them still to come. But at that moment, when the angel told them they'd better start dipping into their old age pensions for cash to build a nursery, the reason they laughed was that it suddenly dawned on them that the wildest dreams they'd ever had hadn't been half wild enough. There are some questions for reflection tonight, and I included these in the PDF that I sent so that you can continue to reflect on these questions during the week. Number one, recall a time when you felt almost ridiculously joyful. And what made that time so joyful? So just take a moment, think of the time when you felt ridiculously joyful. For some of you, maybe it was when a child was born as in this story. So just take that moment and hold that in your heart. And number two, what are the things that most take away your joy in life? What are the things that most take away your joy in life? And then number three, how can the child born at Christmas give you a joy that runs deeper
feeling your joy right now? Has anyone ever called you a Grinch? Or have you ever accused someone else of Grinch-like behavior? A Grinch is someone who is negative and tries to steal your joy. And we get that from that Christmas special. Did anybody watch on TV this year the story of how the Grinch stole Christmas? Or do you perhaps read that book to your children or grandchildren during the Christmas season? It's a story by Dr. Seuss, and the main character in it, the Grinch, absolutely hates Christmas. So do you remember why the Grinch was so irritated all the time? Does anybody remember those three reasons that the Grinch was just always irritated? Well, number one is that his shoes were too tight. And also, it's possible that his head wasn't screwed on right. But most importantly, his heart was two sizes too small. So the Grinch, with his too small heart, tried to steal Christmas. He tried to steal everyone's joy by stealing all the presents and all the food for the feast, all the decorations and all the fun stuff that he thought represented Christmas. But for those of you who are familiar with the story, what happens in the story? The Grinch is poised at the top of the mountain with all the loot and he is anxiously waiting for the cries from all those in the town, from the Whovilles. He's waiting for their cries and for their sorrow when he, think, he thinks they're going to realize that Christmas didn't come. But what did the Grinch hear instead? The people of Whoville joined together and they were lifting their voices in song. The Grinch couldn't steal Christmas. He couldn't take Christmas away. He could not steal their joy. And he realized that Maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas means something more. This year, many folks are feeling like something is trying to steal their Christmas. Something's trying to steal their joy. But let me just tell you tonight that COVID did not steal Christmas. And please, please don't let it steal your joy. Things are different this year. There's no doubt about that. But different does not have to be bad. Just look at what we are doing tonight. As we gather outside and online, we are like the people of Whoville, lifting their voices together in joy while the Grinch sits up on his mountain peak expecting sadness and sorrow. As we light these Advent candles each week, we are lighting up our little corner of the world, showing everybody that in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. So at the end of the Grinch's story, his heart is transformed, and it grows three sizes. Three sizes. So he started out with a heart that was two sizes too small. But at the end of the story, his heart grew three sizes. What a transformation. When we lit our Advent candles tonight, we prayed for our hearts to be transformed. We prayed, prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. So during this Christmas season, if you've been feeling a little Grinch-like, if you've been focusing on the things that you're missing, instead of the new experiences that you are gaining, then I would challenge you to take a tip from the Grinch. Let your heart be transformed so that you may walk in the light of Christ. So how do we know the size of our hearts? We can measure our hearts by the way that we treat each other, by looking at how we love God and love our neighbors. And when we allow our own hearts to grow and be filled with the light of Christ, well, we can light the world. And so now let us join our voices together again, like those people in Whoville, singing joy to the world as we sing 
Let every heart prepare him room.